Here we're going to look at a nice and quick elementary number theory problem. So our goal is to prove that 459 times n to the 37 plus 323 times n to the 15 is always divisible by 391. So this like seems like an astounding fact, but as we'll see, there's a pretty simple way to prove this. And this actually holds for all integers n. Okay, so let's see what tools we're gonna use. So these are the three main tools that we're gonna use. One is just a reimagining of the notion of divisibility via the notion of congruence modulo m. So a is divisible by m, that could be equivalently stated as, as a is congruent to zero mod m. And that really just allows us to rephrase this in the language of modular arithmetic and use things like our next two tools. Next, we've got if P and Q are distinct primes, A is congruent to zero mod P and A is congruent to zero mod Q, then A is congruent to zero mod PQ. In other words, if A is divisible by P and divisible by Q, then A is divisible by P times Q. And it's not actually important that P and Q are distinct primes here. What we mostly need is that P and Q are relatively prime to each other, but we'll use this exactly in our solution. Then finally, we're gonna use something called Fermat's little theorem. So if you notice, a bunch of the number theory problems I do on the channel use Fermat's little theorem or Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem. So let's recall that real quick. That says for all primes p and integers n, n to the p is congruent to n mod p. So sometimes this is stated differently. Sometimes this is stated only for integers that are not divisible by p. And then you have n to the p minus one is congruent to one mod p. But you can extend this to all integers if you just multiply both sides of that congruence by n and you end up with this setup. Okay, so now that we've got these like three useful facts, let's go ahead and look at the solution. Now we're gonna jump into our solution. So the first thing that I wanna notice is that 391 has a nice factorization into primes. And that factorization goes like this. So I'll just write note 391 is the same thing as 17 times 23. And then 17 and 23 are both primes. So that, that's in fact the prime factorization of 391. So the next thing that we wanna notice is that these two coefficients, 459 and 323, those are in fact multiples of 17. So we can write 459, that's actually equal to 27 times 17. And then 323 is equal to 19 times 17. So notice that that tells us that 459 is congruent to zero mod 17. And then furthermore, 323 is also congruent to zero mod 17. But that gives us something that's actually a little bit stronger than our goal. That gives us the following statement. For all integers x and y, we have 459 times x plus 323 times y is congruent to zero mod 17. And now notice our setup is exactly a special case of this where x is equal to n to the 37 and then y is equal to n to the 15. All right, so we've got our object is divisible by 17 so now we need to show that our object is divisible by 23, or in other words, it is congruent to zero mod 23. We're gonna do that by doing division with remainder of these two numbers and 23. So first we can notice that 459 is going to be equal to 19 times 23 plus 22. So you can do that just like with standard division with remainder like you might have learned in elementary school. And then furthermore, 323, that's in fact equal to 14 times 23 plus one. So here we've got a remainder of 22, here we've got a remainder of one. 
But let's recall that that means that we can have a really nice reduction modulo 23. In fact, we have 459 is congruent to 22 mod 23. And then 323 is congruent to 1 mod 23. And now you can probably see where we're going. Notice 22 plus 1. Well, that's just 23, but 23 is 0 mod 23. So we're actually about ready to finish it off. So let's take our goal here, which is 459 n to the 37 plus 323 n to the 15. And let's simultaneously reduce it modulo 23 and factor out some powers of n. So let's factor out an n to the 14 and then reduce these coefficients mod 23. That's going to leave us with 22 n to the 23 plus 1 n to the 1 power. So that's what we have mod 23. But now, by Fermat's little theorem, we know that this n to the 23 is really just congruent to n mod 23. Again, by the statement that we had before. So what that tells us is that this interior here adds up to 23n. So putting that back together with this n to the 14, we have 23n to the 15, but that's congruent to 0 mod 23. 23. Okay, nice. So let's see what we have. We have our more general case, which has a specific version that implies our goal for mod 17. And then we have this equation right here, which tells us that our goal is congruent to 0 mod 23. But putting those two things together tells us that this object is congruent to 0 mod 23 times 17, or 391. In other words, it's divisible by 391. And that's a good place to stop.